Hello, one and all, this is Harry Kettle and welcome back to Fightful MMA. We are being joined by a very special guest, speaking to him for the first time in around 16 months or so. It is the one, the only, Eric Anders. Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? Man, doing awesome, man. Thank you for having me. Now, like I said, it's been about 16 months since we spoke, but obviously the big news is your most recent win in Minneapolis. Congratulations. Given how your career has gone the last year or so, would you say that's the most satisfying win of your career so far? Man, you know, it's pretty big. You know, I think that every win is, um, you know, just as important as the next. Uh, but this one was a little bit sweet, uh, a little bit sweeter, because, you know, I've been on a three-fight losing streak, and... Uh, you know, it felt really good to, to snap that streak and, and get back on the winning, winning path. Now, people deal with losses in very different ways in any kind of any sport, any any walk of life. For you, mentally, you know, you, you've experienced losses in, in football and things like that. How, how did it impact you to, to go on those streaks of losses? How, how did it get to you? Man, you know, uh, you know, I'm a winner, man. You know, I hate losing more than I like winning, but at the same time, I also have a, a 24-hour rule, so win, lose, or draw 24 hours after the match. You know, it's over with, moving on, back to the drop board, uh, looking to improve, get better, and, uh, you know, keep moving forward. Well, one of those one of those fights that we just spoke about, the Killer Roundtree fight, I can't quite put into words the, the mental toughness that I think people saw on display from you in that fight. I mean... It, it, it was one of those fights where you kind of, it doesn't look like you go, it's going your way, and yet you, your persistence to keep getting back up and keep just moving forward, where do you draw that kind of strength from? And, you know, those are decisions. That, that's a choice, you know. There's a lot of people that wouldn't have gotten back up. Uh, you know, after that second round, I think I got dropped like four times, and the doctor came over there and was like, man, are you all right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people... Um, we threw in the towel at that point, but like I said, it's a decision, it's a choice. So as long as I'm able to fight, um, as long as I'm conscious, you know, then you know I'm gonna get off the stool, I'm gonna get in there, and uh, you know we're gonna figure it out. When we spoke back in January 2018, you wanted to fight four times in 2018, and you did. And then you've already proceeded to fight again in 2019 a couple of times. Have you had time to breathe, to stop, to, to enjoy, you know, the greater things outside of MMA? Yeah, you know, uh, I spent all of last week or the, the week before in Vegas. So with my wife uh, didn't have the kids, so, you know, we went out, had a good time, uh, partied a little bit, so... You know, uh, I'm here in San Antonio watching my, uh, you know, to watch my teammate fight, Walt Harris. And uh, but man, you know, me and my kids were on the way to the gym to go train with, uh, you know, Jason Yarrington and uh, you know the the same guy who trains uh, Alexander Hernandez, who's also fighting this weekend. So, you know, I, I never turn it off, really. You know, so uh, I love training. I love what I do. So, you know, I don't mind getting up and training, and you know, it's fun for me. It really does feel kind of like you're in the in in the prime of you know your, your life, let alone your career. When you kind of look at how things have gone so far and what you what you want to happen in the future, it, are you as in love with MMA as you were, say, say sixteen to eighteen months ago? Oh, absolutely, man! More than ever, you know. Um, it's a rough sport, of course. Everybody knows that, you know, but. Man, you know, my uh, my love for the sport just continues to grow. Uh, the more I travel, the more I train. So, you know, uh, I'm going to be here for a while. Obviously, weight classes, all the rage, all the talk in MMA media, MMA fighters, managers, everything. You know, the, the decision to move up, to move down in weight, it's so important these days. We've seen what people like Anthony Smith, we've seen what people like Tiago Santos, former opponent of yours, have done. If you could send a message to people who were considering moving up in weight and considering, you know, making that decision for their own health, well, what would you say to them? Oh, man, you know, it's your body. You know it, you know. I think for guys like Anthony Smith and Chiago Santos, it was the right move to make. And if you watch their fights, you know, they're more durable at 205. You know, you watch Chiago Santos get knocked out by David Branch with one punch, you know. But then, you know, he gets into, you know, a dog fight with me, uh, John Jones, um, Jimmy Manoa. So, you know, he, he, you know, these guys, when, 
when they when they cut less weight, and I don't know how they were cutting weight before. Um, you know, they're more durable. They can take more. You know, Thiago Santos, T- TKO, and Anthony Smith, it all started, started with the body shot, you know. So, you know, uh, everybody's different. I think I'm just as durable at 205 as I am at 85. And those guys don't hit as hard at 85. So I'm probably more durable at 85. But that's just me personally. So, um, you know, everybody's different, you know. Uh, so you got to do what's best for you. I think your durability has certainly helped you to have some amazing fights, fight of the nights or even performance of the nights. Three of your last five fights have received the official fight of the night or performance of the night accolade. It's almost as if that, that, that's come on in this in this like busy period of yours. That is when you've, you, you've really stepped it up in terms of these performances. You've, you've just hit that next level and, and it doesn't always come with wins. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see. Is that an important part of your game for you or are you just someone who just thinks, you know what, I'll go out there, get the win however I want and if it doesn't go my way, it doesn't go my way? Man, you know, uh, I feel like I'm an entertaining fighter. It's not that I try to be. It's just who I am, and people just so happen to like my fighting style, so good for me. Um, but, you know, I, I always have fight-ending intentions whenever I fight, man. I'm never trying to go to a decision. Uh, two, you know, I've lost two really close decisions, you know, uh, so I, I never wanted to go to a decision, so I'm always trying to get him out of there. So, you know, uh, you know, usually it's either me or him, so, you know, it is what it is. So now, now that you find yourself in the position you're in, you, you said to me when when we last spoke, we, we did the whole 18 to 24 months thing, you wanted to be around about a contender at the end of 2019. We've still got half the year left. You, you've come back with a big knockout win. In a division like the one you're in, how, how many wins do you feel like it takes for you to get to the point where you can say, OK, I can start looking at those top five guys? Man, you, I think you just need the right opponent. You look at guys like Ian Heinrich. He's had two fights in the UFC, and he's top ten, you know. So, uh, man, you start knocking out those guys with numbers next to their name, and, and you get the number next to your name. So, you know, uh, it really just depends on, you know, who it is that you're fighting. You know, I never say no. So, if they give me a top 15 guy, you know, I plan on fighting two more times, at least two more times this year. So, you know, uh, maybe I win. Uh, maybe with another win against an unranked guy, they give me a top 15 guy. Uh, in either weight class uh, by the end of the year. So, you know, uh, that's what I'm looking for. What about your game specifically? What do you think you have improved with it, whether it be, you know, wrestling, whether it be striking, whether it be anything? What, what do you think you're, in your game you've improved and focused on the most recently? Well, man, you know, I think my, my ground game, everybody's sleeping on my ground game, my takedown defense and all that. Um so it's really hard to show how much I've improved on the ground, especially off my back. But, you know, I would say my strike output and my footwork has probably, you know, increased leaps and bounds, uh, especially since that Theodoro uh, fight. You know, I really haven't had a chance to to show it, but, you know, it's there. It's something I'm constantly working on. So, you know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I get to show it my next fight. I don't know. And finally, we're going to ask the same question we did last time. In 18 to 24 months' time, what, 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 what do you see for Eric Anders? What do you see for yourself happening? Uh, 18, 24 months, you know, I, I definitely see myself in the top five, uh, if not fighting for the belt.